Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. My name is Marlies and today we have a special guest, uh, Louise. Welcome Louise. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Um, for the ones who are already following us in our series, we have had a get together in Austria and we made some content together and some different kinds of videos. And this will be one of the videos in our series. If you have not checked out any of the other videos, I would strongly recommend to visit um, Louise's ch channel. I will put the link down below in the description box. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, also I will make a playlist in the end of this video so you can see all our other content. But for today we are going to create something uh, with uh, the Distress Paint from Tim Holtz. And we're going to play around a little bit in abstract style. In front of us are uh, three pieces of cardboard. And we have cut them in similar sizes and we have to tape the, taped the back so it is still uh, three pieces that will be ongoing when you paint on it. And our first layer is uh, just so, just a basic layer so you can get started. And perhaps we should mention that we are not going to do the same thing on the left and the right here but we want to show you some different variations of what you can do with the same mediums and materials. So on the left, where Marlies is working, you can see like a more basic version of this idea. And here on the right, you can see some, yeah, like more fancy supplies, <laughs> even if fancy is perhaps not the right word. But we want to show you that you can recreate this idea no matter what you have in your stash. So it's not like a whole range of products that you need. So when you're like a beginner, you have just a couple of uh, mediums um, in your studio and some paints. This is already a video for you. Um, yeah, how you can create something nice with a minimum amount of supplies. <clears throat> Shall we perhaps cover those edges as well? Yeah, let's do that too. I uh, have... This is cardboard uh, from around 4 millimeters, And of course you saw the color is gray. And um, you need this basic layer just to get a layer on there, like it's a primer. So every other medium that you are using uh, after this uh, gesso uh, will uh, stick to your top layer. And it will not soak into the base and make it like really wet and... Yeah, it gives a layer uh, because like the cardboard is still an open structure. It will suck up any fluids. And uh, the gesso is supposed to be uh, against it and give it a little layer that is closed. With this gesso, I like to put two thin layers instead of one thicker layer. And if my brayer would work. <laughs> And I also agree with Louise um, because maybe one um, thin layer is just a little bit too thin. So just make sure um, to cover it up very nicely in maybe two some thinner layers. And it's also, I guess, depending on the thickness of the gesso. So what we have here is a relatively cheap and thin gesso. Yeah, that the, covers not so well. No, that, that does matter, yeah. Do you want me to do this really like beautiful or can I just leave it like this? It's a little bit grungy. No, leave it like this, that is fine. That is totally fine. And that is also a good difference uh, to see for our viewers that um, these are just uh, straight brush strokes and th that is a little bit more grungy but uh, it's for you to see how it all works out and if there is any difference in the end 
think that's a really great realization. It's like, you know, it's over. I don't think it's going to be here. I don't think it's going to be here. Yeah, just feel all those guys are going to be here. It's 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 going to be here
Uh, well, yeah, just see how mm -hmm. it turns out. So then it would perhaps be a good idea to use some lace that you can tear relatively easily. Yeah. And not something like, oh, I can't get it out. Something like this that you can't tear with your hands. No, that is way too sturdy yeah, then. I yeah. don't think so. So I will hold my panels up to the camera a little bit closer so you can see and I will turn it around a little bit so you can see what I did to create the texture. I scraped uh, along the, the top of the panels but I also did a little bit of the tapping so with a flat palette knife and when you tap and you pull up some of the um, texture paste it will give you some beautiful peaks and roughness in your work. Shall I tell you what I just thought? Yeah. Uh, if you have, for example, a fork or... Uh, what is this thing where you brush your hair? The hair dryer. No, not dryer, but... Uh, oh. Cum. Oh, the cum. Yeah, uh, like a... Is it like... No, it's not like a brush. No, it's not like a brush, but it's like, you know. To brush your hair. Yeah, you know, you understand. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Brush your hair. Yeah, it's it's a brush, I think. Yeah, I don't know. Perhaps, perhaps it's even cam. <laughs> <laughs> because those words that we don't know in English are always the same in German. Just say it a little bit English-ish, and yeah. then it's English. But, you know, you could take a fork... Or something that has, or a pokey, um, an awl or something, tool, yeah. and then spread yeah. it. And make some, do some mark making yeah. into the wet uh, paste. Yeah, you could do that. You can even uh, stamp a little bit in there. Um, when you have like a textured surface, maybe uh, when you are talking about embossing folders, mm -hmm. and you have embossed uh, a sturdy piece of paper, you can even press... Uh, those things in wet paste just be gentle at first and see how it works out but um, when it works out and it is pretty yeah you can uh, build up some pressure for some better imaging oh wow louise that already looks very good not so bad i mean this stands up yeah. just yeah it's nothing. it's amazing it really is <laughs> The only thing that you can keep in mind when you look at Louise's work right now, that you have three loose panels. So that is what I did. I just yeah. made it a little bit uh, uh, like this. So you have some room in between. But I do not know for now if it will work with the lace. Um, um, yeah. I, uh, I will quickly run to my uh, water container and put that into water. And then I will explain what I thought when I did it like this yeah and also what i want to try with the translucent paste because i have some thoughts yeah, yeah you have some uh, thoughts already because i want to leave it next to each other here so i will just lift it up with the help of this plate i have um put my um collage medium only here and here and here but not there where the cut is where those cut Bots are meeting you can see the lace is here like lifted up and here is no glue so that I can later on either tear it or cut through it and here I want to try out um, if I can uh, carefully cut through the paste later to get like more of a straight cut instead of this loose and really abstract thing that you would get if you would bend yeah. That. Do you know more what I mean? It, it will be more rough. I don't want to have those noses here. Yeah. Because the rest of this is relatively flat compared to that. Yeah. I understand. Uh, I don't know if that will work, but we will see. <laughs> yeah, we will see. It's all an adventure, right? <laughs> it is. Okay, so for us right now, it's drying time. We're going to let this dry and we will be back in a short while. We are back for the next step. We just created a basic layer of gesso. The next layer on my uh, piece was the texture paste. And uh, what did you do the first two steps, Louise? I had the lace and also texture paste, but mine was translucent. 
and oh. yours was opaque. opaque. Yeah. So let's do the next step. Uh, we have uh, two jars and um, I am going to work with the texture paste, but then the opaque crackle one. And Louise will do the distress collage medium crazing. And uh, it is all about texture. So let's begin and uh, put some on with a palette knife. You have the choice. Mm, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. So for me, it is not supposed to be that I'm going to cover up uh, a large area. I am just concentrating on some little pieces in the corners or along the sides. Because remember, it will be three panels and not a total one project. So uh, you also have to think about when you are aiming for the sides to think about all sides of all three panels. Corners, she said. <laughs> so I would put it into the corner. <laughs> oh, well, you you do not have to, but that is the thing that I yeah, am planning. Yeah, but that sound, sounds good. Yeah, it sounds good for you too. <laughs> yeah. And you um, have teached me, have teached, <laughs> have taught me, Yeah. <laughs> that it's good to put that on a little bit thicker. Yeah. Um, I had some problems with the crazing medium in the past when I have put it way too thick. I mean, thick, thick. Thick, thick, yeah. Um, then it did nothing. Not those oh. like really big crackles, but yeah, really nothing. But I think I learned from your videos how thick it can be. So what I'm trying to say is watch Mali's video. <laughs> And aim for a medium thick layer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and perhaps I should not put that here. So later on, I perhaps can't cut it anymore. <laughs> no, because you still want to cut the lace. Yeah, yeah, I understand. So you can put it on, um, on the panel and then uh, swipe it along the sides in and hold your palette knife in an angle. Uh, but after that, that is what I just did, after that you can still go back in and just push it a little bit like this to create a little bit more uh, like peaks and like more creases. And that way, perhaps, do you want to hold that to this camera? Yeah. Um, this way, I think on your piece, it um, blends in really well with the other paste yeah because um compared to this i have used the stencil and it has a really like concrete pattern so i will not do what you do there because i don't want to have that too too wild yeah do you know what i mean yeah i understand how is your panel going louise <laughs> i'm wondering why you are so fast <laughs> oh just take your time I think it's it's um, really hard to imagine, but perhaps it's also not necessary to imagine, um, how that will come out later. Because everything is like transparent here. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not so easy to imagine how much I want to have. Yeah, sometimes it's difficult to know up front. Yeah. Also, like the results, how will it craze? Um yeah, it's more like trying things out, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think I want to have more here in the middle. I want to have something like, a, yeah, not a line, but... But a gradient from like the lace into already the um, the stem, the stencil that you used with the paste. Yeah. And then make like an, a gradient towards that. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds good. I just realized it's really good if you know... Oh, if you understand what I mean, and if you can't speak English, then it's really helpful. Well, you are doing great. I mean, your English is awesome. We do understand each other. Perhaps we should mention that um, it is not so good to use a heat gun. <clears throat> no, I would not. Um, no, I would not do that. Yeah, because the crackers get not so nice when you put heat to them. So air drying is always the best with those crazing mediums. And also, I guess, with yeah, with all of the pastes, I would say. Yeah, air drying is the best. Okay, so we are going to let it air dry and we will be back in a bit. 
We are back and our crackle paste has dried. I will put it up to the camera a little bit closer so you can see what happened. That turned out so, so cool. Yeah, that is amazing. You could even leave it white and it would look fantastic. Yeah, it doesn't need much work. You can work on it, but it does not have to be. Wow. How did your uh, panel turn out, yeah. Louise? I'm really satisfied with it, but I think it's hard to see it because the crazing medium is, of course, translucent. But I think Ooh. there in the corner you can see it. But I'm planning to bring out those crackles a little bit more with some tricks. Ooh, cannot wait. <laughs> okay, so in front of us you can already see we have uh, all kinds of blue tones, paints, the distress paints. And we are going to uh, build on the panels we already have. And uh, for me, um, I am going to begin with a darker color of blue. Uh, prize ribbon uh, or maybe uncharted mariner and i'm going to water down um, my distress paint a little bit and make it like uh, a very flowy layer that goes on top and what about you louise what are you going to do yeah i want to stay in the blues as well but i want to start with speckled egg <laughs> Are you petting it? <laughs> I'm petting it because it's <laughs> such such a great color. <laughs> and I want to start with the lighter blues. I've also taken out weathered wood. Um, that is actually not a blue, but a color that matches really well. And I also have lost shadow here because I think I want to try something with these. But then later on also go into a more like more vibrant direction with Uncharted Mariner and Savage Patina. Oh, and pet it again. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we try that? Oh yeah, let's begin. <laughs> so funny. Oh my. How much water do you use? I'm going to put a drop of the prize ribbon on top of this acrylic plate. And I will immediately also put some water on the side. So I... And just put a very uh, amount of water there so you do not have to go back in there. Um, and of course I am going to use um, a brush. And so I can mix and make it um, as fluid as I like. So I'm just going to try it a little bit. That is very clever. I have never seen someone doing it like that. Normally I spritz my water to the paint and then I have a mess on my table. <laughs> but this way... That is very clever. And besides that, uh, when you add the paint, the watered down paint to your panels, uh, you still have your water bottle uh, beside you. So um, when you think it's drying too fast or you want it even watered down more, um, yeah, just use your water bottle sprayer and uh, spray some water on top. Okay, I will do it. <laughs> Here it looks like those really concrete areas and here with the water it flows around better. And you can also let that run into the crackles really well when you have much water. I'm going to use the water bottle as well and see how I can activate it a little bit more. And you can right away see how that works. And of course you can pick up those panels or any structure that you are working on and just move it around a little bit. Um, if you have thought about if you want to use the single panels later on like this or like this or like this or like this. Oh. And if you thought about that and decide which color you put where Oh. Now, I mean, you know, this looks like a beach and a sky, for example. Yeah. And then it would make sense. It would be lighter here and darker here. Yeah. But if you see it like this and this is still the beach, then, you know, <laughs> it, would have, yeah. it would be better to have the light area here and dark here. Well, I think that the beauty uh, about working abstract is that most of the time you can 
turn it the way you like. Yeah. <laughs> so if if this does not work out, this uh, point of view, maybe then three panels in this way will work out. Uh, and that is the beauty of abstract, uh, because if there's not like uh, a focal point on it, you can twist and turn it mm -hmm. the way that you like. Mm -hmm. And for me right now, you can see I have lighter areas, but I also have some darker areas. And I like to go back in and make that even a little bit darker. And just build up some of my layers and see... Um, yeah, if it, if it makes a difference in like contrast with dark and light. What happens if you mix faded jeans and uncharted marina? <laughs> well, we're going to find out because you are going to mix it for us. <laughs> This is how it looks separately. This is faded jeans and that is uncharted marina. <coughs> now mix and match. This is what my panel looks like right now. I have made the darker parts um, of my first layer even darker with the same color. But I did um, damp it down with the, the water uh, bottle and just let it flow a little bit. I will let you see up close how it will look right now also on the crackle. And you can still see it is wet and uh, the paint is running towards the bottom, but that's okay because this is just the first layer that we are going to add. Um, and there are even many possibilities to work on it more. So yeah, just do not be uh, afraid to try some layers out. And even if you do not like it the first time, um, yeah, there is enough that you can do and layer upon so you can have a good and great result. How is your color combination working, Louise? Yeah, uh, when you talk about great end result, I'm not so sure if that will happen for me today. <laughs> <laughs> because <clears throat> I really like this, but how did I do that? I think here is uh, where that wood included. I like this dirty blue. This is strange, but I will dry it. And then I will see... Because you said I can layer, so I will Oh try yeah, that. yeah, just layer until you are satisfied. I mean, that is also um, the meaning of mixed media. You can mix and match and layer until you are happy. I think I will throw in some freight burger. <laughs> what are you waiting for? And when you have... looked at me, I was also wondering, why am I waiting? I don't know. I was just sitting here. <laughs> just thought I'm too <laughs> slow and I have to do or say something no <laughs> not at all I was just uh, like daydreaming or something like that <laughs> <laughs> what was I doing waiting but for what yeah good question <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness so I am going to add some more paint. I'm going for uh, also a lighter paint and make maybe some areas a little bit lighter. So let me see. I will go for the weathered wood and stay uh, just in the blue tones. For me, this is just a perfect basic uh, layer. Um, I have some dark tones and some lighter tones right now in the middle. And uh, of course I would like to add some more uh, layering. So I'm going to 
dry this first and so just to be sure everything will stay on there and the color is uh, set, it's, it's fixed um, and then I will come back and uh, add some more. I'm going to add another color to this party. I'm going to use the Uncharted Mariner. And it's also a quite a little bit of a darker um, blue. And I'm going to focus on the edges right now. But do not forget um, the panel is like um, yeah, taped together on the back. So when we will take the take uh, tape off, you have those sides. So if you want to... Uh, accent, um, make an accent on all sides. Do not forget these sides. I've just decided that this is a little bit too boring for me and this has not enough contrast yet. And first I want to go a little bit darker with a Stabilo oil pen. If you want to search for that, you can just uh, type into the search bar of the shop of your choice, Stabilo All, and the number is, oh wait, I can't really read it, 8046. This is available in black and in white. And do you know if there are some other colors? I think that are the main colors, perhaps brown or some neutrals could be possible i think they have i thought they had a lot of colors but i'm not sure but okay. mostly used is black and uh, white yeah i think so did you just spread here to my oops i think i did <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> but that's good then i only have to do the rest here because i need a lot of water now because i want to try with my left hand normally i'm right-handed to go over here so it is very useful to uh, use your non-dominant hand so you can get rid of your control and um, get loose. So I think that is a great solution uh, also against perfectionism because a lot of us can be perf uh, perfect or want to be perfect in some kind of way. And with this kind of technique, uh, you will lose that. So yeah, great idea. Uh, like Louise just pointed out that contrast in your work is very important so it is more visible and also more appealing to the eyes. I'm going to add a darker color and I'm going to use the Distress Paint Ground Espresso. And um, like I said before, do not forget those little lines in the middle because you have three panels. Ah, that looks so cool with the brown and those really light areas. I, I want to have some light areas as well and I just thought how can I do that? There would be of course several possibilities. One possibility would be to take white paint but I don't have the picket fence distress paint which would be white. I'm a little bit afraid about like normal acrylic paint that I have because I don't know how that will react with the distress paint and I want to keep the features of those paints and I don't want to mix that up with another kind of paint. An alternative if you don't have picket fans would be perhaps to take a paper towel, make that a little bit wet and try to rub off some of the paint that is not totally dry yet. So I will try that. I was wondering, can you give me that brush on the side of your acrylic plate? Yeah, thank you very much. It's already too dry. Oh no! I have 
have to take out a little bit like heavier guns. So I am <laughs> taking this sanding disc here, trying to get lighter areas. And what I am going to do right now is to use this brush and splatter some um, on paint on my panels. And because I'm still working with the ground espresso, so you can see over here, I'm also going to splatter with the ground espresso. I already did some. And um, the splatters will not be very round, nice of shape because they are going to fade in the wet uh, background. But uh, I don't mind because it's already abstract. Um, so let's see, um, yeah, I will hold it c more close to the camera so you can see the effect. What I also can see on my panels is that I really like the very darker colors. So because this is all still wet, I'm going to dry these parts and I'm going back in to even make them darker uh, just in a bit. So my panels are dry right now and like I said I like the darker parts so I'm going back in and add some more dark tones just to see if that will even add more. And this is what I like about uh, also about abstract and also about building up layers because you can find um, some answers in your work like I just had this dark area, which I really liked. So that brought me the idea to create even more darker areas. So ta always take a good look at your piece and see what it tells you, what you like or what you do not like and the things that you do like. Try to make that, um, make that more or add, add something. Um, I think um, yeah, that will work. And what can I do if it doesn't speak at all? Um, maybe um, what I sometimes do is that I will put it to the side. Sometimes you will have a blind spot for your work. Why are you laughing? I mean, that is really what I do. Yeah, <laughs> I just thought, okay, that is very professional. Step back. Keep calm, take a tea. <laughs> yeah. I totally agree uh, with what you said because uh, going away can really help, of course. And throwing it away is never a good solution. But <laughs> no, I think we all have uh, have that sometimes, and that it's okay to feel like that. Um, the most str uh, strong thing to do is to persevere and get through it and try to first maybe distance yourself and after that take a good look at your work after a couple of hours or maybe after a day and uh, let the panel in this case or your paper decide uh, what your next step can be. Um, like I said I like the darker areas and that is what I'm going to add even more right now and let's see how how that works perhaps i just want to prepare your viewers if they watch my videos as well what they will get i mean you know they they will get a whole lot of inspiration <laughs> they will see me opening windows and throwing it out <laughs> yeah <laughs> Okay, guys, <laughs> be prepared. <laughs> perhaps, yeah, perhaps they should know that. I mean, they know from you that you keep calm and take a tea and look at it again. And I'm a little bit more like <laughs> aggressive, I would say, <laughs> with those things. And by the way, I'm just uh, taking the picket fence distress crayon to get more lighter areas because I'm really close to freaking out with this white here. But I can't open the window because Marlies is here. <laughs> it's good that I have two picket fence crayons because I think after this 
<laughs> the whole crayon is gone? Yeah, yeah, because that is really cool. Let me see. Oh, wow. That is... Yeah. Yeah, really, really awesome. And with the black in there, that is relatively cool. And by the way, uh, the crazing medium that I've used here for my crackers is also supposed to use in combination with the crayons. I mean, you don't have to use these crayons, but uh, any other crayon that you could smear would work as well. Yeah, that would also work. And normally I would smear that with my finger, but in this case I want to have that really deep in the cracks. So I'm first bringing it around with my finger and then I'm, use, uh, I'm using a paper towel to get um, the crayon off from the medium itself and leaving it just in those slots. And I hope you can see very clearly that some spots are getting darker uh, because of uh, me adding the ground espresso on those dark areas that I like. Um, for my next step, I need this first to dry so the paint can set, can fix. And um, after that, I can add another layer without worrying um, that these layers that I already created will be will be gone or mixed. Uh, you can see that I still have quite some uh, blue paint on my palette. So what I did with the darker colors, uh, the ground espresso, I'm also going to do with the blue tone, the dark blue tone, the prize ribbon. I'm going to add some extra to some blue areas on my panels. So I also added the darker blue color, the prize ribbon, on some areas that were already blue. And you can see how nice the pop of color is. And again, I will dry this first before adding my new layer. I have put some wine, 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 <laughs> oh, wine. wine. Yay. Yay. <laughs> that could be. That sounds great, right? <laughs> Give me some wine. <laughs> I have put some white paint onto my palette. Um, uh, for this uh, layer, I'm just going to use uh, my fingers and tap it on the raised areas of the paste and also the crackle and just see how it will turn out and if it will create some extra contrast. I have the feeling that the frayed burlap is not enough here on my lace. So I'm trying to add some more areas with that, but uh, with the crayon. And I'm expecting this a little, um, to be a little bit more greenish than the paint is. And oh, yes. That's good. And now I think I have to cut it apart 
otherwise I really can't imagine how much of this uh, darker color I want to put through the edges. Yeah, you have really, to see it yeah. uh, apart from yeah. each other. It's really hard to imagine because I can see here where the cut has to go. Yeah. And here it also like um, wants to go apart from each other a little bit. Um, but of course, I also want to have this, <clears throat> like Marlies said a few minutes ago, uh, here on the edges. I don't want to have them like, you know, naked. So I think uh, I will take an exacto knife. And what I'm doing with the white paint is just um, putting a little bit on my finger, tap off any excess, and just slowly tap it on some raised areas in my work. And it does not have to be very, very white or a big spot that will be uh, lighter or white, but just, yeah, just some little, little areas. And at the moment when you think, oh, I have added way too much uh, white, you can still go in with your water bottle and just water it down a little bit. And so it gets a little bit flowy and grunny and that's also fine. Because after that, and after drying time, you can still um, add another layer again and again until you are happy. <laughs> okay, something came to mind, I think. <laughs> that sounds good. If you are really, really brave, and if you can live with messing up your project, right... Uh, in front of the last step you can just take and I know what I'm doing now is a way of something <laughs> that some people would not recommend I will make a line with this <laughs> white powder here <clears throat> this is white embossing powder by Ranger where am I? And normally, of course, it's supposed to like put embossing ink to your piece or water and then put the powder on top of the piece directly from the bottle, bottle uh, container. But I will do it differently because I want to try to get some pieces of the powder sticking to the raised areas of my lace here, which are still wet. And if someone tells you that you can't put embossing powder on like this, just by dipping it into the powder, then uh, show him this. And in my eyes, it melts in a really similar way, like you would do it the other way around when the thing is like abstract. I mean, I wouldn't do that with a stamped image or something, like for example stamp a butterfly with embossing ink and then press the paper or whatever into the powder I wouldn't do that but when it's abstract like this and I only want to have some highlights then of course I mean why not and now my lace is popping up a little bit what you can perhaps hear is not the powder but the lace it's perhaps a little bit like plastic but that also gives a nice texture but my powder is disappearing I can see that I think it went to the back side of the la lace somehow it melted down through the yeah, holes I think. through the holes yeah, yeah. but just keep adding powder because uh, that was is there of course it is melting at, and it gets sticky 
and that way you can add more white and it will stay visible in the end I think so this is how it looks when several layers of white embossing powder are on the lace here uh, I found out that it is really helpful to put several layers of the powder to this because the first one two three layers are like falling into those holes of the lace and melting like on the back side of the lace and then you can't see them anymore but be patient just add more and then you have this like really cool white contrast so my last step was adding some pieces uh, of white uh, on top and uh, this is what it looks like up close i also did uh, some splattering and um, yeah i think it turned out great with the great texture and crackle and there's a little bird have you seen the bird <laughs> where look here oh yeah it's sitting there with <laughs> <laughs> Cute, I mean, right? his eyes are a little bit like he has some beer or something. <laughs> yeah, he's like, uh, yeah, but he is there. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this has to go like this later. So you've already decided for the direction. Perhaps you find so something here as well. Mm, butterfly wings a little bit. Yeah, I but see no. a husky. Oh yeah, <laughs> two ears. He, yeah, here's the nose. Here yeah, are the ears. Yes. Just put some eyes. Yeah, awesome. Now it's nothing. <laughs> but I'm sure someone out there can see something. Here's a little white cat. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, two. Oh, yes. <laughs> you know, two eyes. Do you see a yeah. little yeah. bit of ears? Yeah. And this little body? Yeah. Oh, cute. Yeah. Funny, real funny, cool. So this was our um, project for today. Uh, we really enjoyed to show you uh, how to use uh, your texture and how to work with the distress paints on top of the texture. And um, yeah, I think uh, working abstract is really beautiful because it does not have to be anything, but it can be if you want to. Uh, and you can use it as a background. But you can also work even further on your pieces and then maybe add like a little beautiful quote or maybe uh, like a metal, uh, a metal piece. Um, and that's already enough for working abstract. What do you think, uh, Louise? I'm just trying to figure out in which order I want to hang these to my wall. Yeah. <laughs> I understand. I totally understand. They're cool, right? I was thinking, look, even if you turn them around, they make sense. I mean, this looks probably now a little bit strange because I just have tried something out here. But even if you would make two times three of them, you could also mix them. Even if we've used blues that I would normally perhaps like this, I mean... It's, it wouldn't be not my favorite combination of, of two blues. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It would go, but I I probably wouldn't do it because it's not so my taste. But when they are like this next to each other, I really like how that looks. Yeah. They are all like in, all in the blue tones. So it could be matching on the wall. Perhaps. Oh, I just get a thought. Perhaps if you want to do that with a friend like we are doing it just here um <laughs> i mean we could later on when you go home do it like do it like that so let's just put it back as it was so that i don't confuse myself and the people out there we could just say which could you give to me and which one could i give to you and then we could just say <laughs> let's do it like this and we can hang them to our walls like that yeah, that's amazing, amazing. And look how cool that fits together. Oh, yeah. And even like this. Yeah, that is so cool. 
So that all already means there are many possibilities if you make <laughs> just a couple of panels and just mix and match them up in different uh, kind of forms and in different kind of ways hanging them on the wall or on a panel, maybe. Um, yeah, this is it, guys. I mean, awesome. Um, so this is also the video for today. I would like to thank Louise for your input and your creativity. I really enjoyed uh, this video, making the, uh, this video. I have to thank you because this was your idea actually to do that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. This was uh, my idea. But thank you for your time and your enthusiasm and yeah, just being able to jump in and create with me. <laughs> so uh, I would do a shout out for Louise because she has a, um, her own YouTube channel. So I will do uh, I will put her uh, link in the description box below. So and I would like to invite you to visit her and yeah, subscribe and ring that bell. Thanks. Thank you, Louise. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, so. We are not finished with our series. I think we have some more ideas. So I hope that we perhaps will see the next time with another idea. Yeah, another technique and maybe some more paint. I'm sure some more paint. Yeah. <laughs> so we said more videos are coming. Next video will be out on Louise's channel. And um, so stay tuned and pay attention for the notification. And Say bye. bye. Have a good day. <laughs>